Hello guys, so let's talk about the mempool. What is the mempool? So let's think about the blockchain warehouse again, where we said all these signed articles that we had, uh, they are first stored somewhere. So the signed articles are these computers, books and so on with this paper on top. They are all put in some storage somewhere in this uh, warehouse and there they are waiting that somebody takes them and puts it in the box. So uh, uh, storage is actually the mempool. So mempool is storage. Uh, how does this differ now to a blockchain? So what's the difference between a mempool and a blockchain? The difference here is that all the transactions that happen, they're first going in the mempool. So first in the mempool and they're called unconfirmed transactions. So unconfirmed transactions are first in mempool and if they are put inside the box, inside the blockchain, in, uh, in the boxes, then it's a confirmed transaction and more boxes on top make it more confirmed, so more confirmations. Uh, but here we have unconfirmed transactions. So they are not put immediately in the block um, and also miner, miners choose, so these warehouse workers, the miners, they choose which transactions go inside the next box or in the next block. Uh, it's like a catch basin uh, for transactions, so everything goes in there first and then somebody takes it and puts it in the block. So why do we need now this mempool? What's the reason why we have it? Uh, it's more like to make sure that transactions are valid and not wrong before already, before we move it inside the blockchain. Uh, the block size is also fixed, so Bitcoin has for example a limit of 1 megabyte. It's increased now, but one megabyte is the limit actually for uh, a block. And they are not, uh, it's not possible to fit in more of these transactions than one megabyte. So we have to store all the tra transactions somewhere before that are going inside later on. And uh, we have to keep a look on how many transactions are waiting. And that's also good that we have this mempool so we can check how many transactions are happening, waiting to get confirmed. So how does the mempool work now? Uh, the mempool is actually, it's a storage, storage or it's stored in the memory. In the memory, so the hardware of the miner in the memory of the miner's node. So they are storing this there, uh, all the transactions that are waiting to confirm and miners add those depending on their need. So. I, I think most of the minor uh, software is is done like this, that they are checking who is paying the most fee. So who of those transactions uh, has the most fee related to it and they are going to take those first. The miner can still decide somehow else, but I think that's the main thing they're doing. They're checking who has the highest fees and this is what they want that goes in first because that's where they can get more profit out of it and each miner has his own mempool so everybody has one of these not only one there are multiple mempools and so there could be that somebody has different transactions inside than the other and currently a miner gets 12.5 uh, ptc so bitcoin um, for mining a block and putting in this transaction plus additionally all these fees that he collects from the transaction so all the fees that people are paying to get in first, they are also collected by the miner. So miner gets the uh, amount later on. But what's uh, what is the issue now with this mempool? Uh, the issue here is it's the bottleneck of the system. So the mempool is really the bottleneck. Uh, everything gets stuck there if there are a lot of people using it. So if more and more people is are using Bitcoin, this gets filled up massively and transaction will be stuck. So we had this already sometime where transaction fees are getting increased. So people had to pay more to get confirmation so that they get inside the blockchain. And they so a lot of them get stuck. And that's why there were some updates coming out with it's called Segwit where the block size is increased or actually some part is moved somewhere else and that's why more can fit inside and people had to pay more fees for that that's the issue and you 
you cannot do uh, microtransactions some cheap you cannot buy some cheap stuff because uh, it was almost impossible because you paid much much more fees than the actually good you bought so this is an issue that uh, we faced because uh, a lot of people were using it at the same time but that's also a reason why we have second layer solutions or forks like bitcoin cash so we will talk about this later as well what is now if my transaction is stuck so people are afraid about that but if it's stuck now what's happening uh, if you pay two less fees it can happen that it takes several hours or even days that your uh, transaction gets confirmed so it can be that it's there for a long time especially if there are a lot of people trying to get in the block uh, so SegWit is one way, some SegWit enabled wallets is a way to increase your confirmation and also transaction pushers, there are online some transaction pushers, they are called like that, um, they can increase your chance of getting inside the block. So they are broadcasting this to miners and I don't know ex exactly how it works but you can try and use it. I think it's free, maybe there are some where you have to pay. I put the link also inside so you can check it out. Then we have another option what you can do is use opt-in replaced by fee. This means you're sending, you're like doing some double transaction, not really, but you send in another transaction with this what you to the people you want to send with the with a higher fee. So you're paying now more than before. And then maybe some miner will take it instead this low fee and then it's confirmed in the blockchain and the other one will not be confirmed. Then another option is child base for parent. So that's here that uh, you have an unconfirmed transaction and we've changed. Uh, so the change is then used for the next transaction. So the next transaction is actually then paying more fee so this is how and the miner sees then that there are two transactions bound together and he can then decide if the total amount is worth to put in so you can also add some more fee uh, to this as well and one thing for you to notice the important thing your money is never lost so your money will never be lost if a transaction is stuck don't worry about that in worst case the transaction is reverted and you get your money back so nothing will happen to it. So where can you check now all of these stats and so on of the mempool? Um, I put up some links to some websites where you can check out. Um, they, there are some online services that give you a lot of information about the mempool. So the unconfirmed transactions. So how many do we have currently? Is there something that is stuck now? Are there a lot of people using it? the mempool size in megabytes and so on. So you can check it out now. I hope this video helped you a lot to understand the mempool and then we can continue on with the video course. Thank you.